So good evening and uh, welcome to A Course in Miracles workbook lesson 128. The title of the, of the lesson is The World I See Holds Nothing That I Want, um, which leads on from the previous lesson 127, which is there is no love but God. And all we really truly want is to know ourselves as that which is the love of God. We are the eternal extension of God's energy, the energy being light, light being the sun. Sun is that which is asleep, dreaming up this universe. And everything we think we see is the contents, the activities of our dream. And we don't want to be asleep anymore. We want to awaken to our true reality. And the reason we're afraid to is not only do we come to start to realize that when we awaken to our true self, we don't awaken as an individual. It's the dreamer's mind, the dreaming mind that has dreamt us up. So we as body mind characters in the dream dissolve into nothingness. We don't exist actually, just in the dream. Um, even the spirit world, which is just the first part of the dream, that dissolves too when we awaken to self, when the Christ mind which is the son of God, which is dreaming us up, awakens to himself, itself. There is no more us. And we're so afraid of that. We want to hang on to our dream of individuality, our dream of separation, our dream where we believe we are either spirit beings or projected into physical form, which, which apparently cannot remember having been spirit either. So we're not searching for the spirit world. We are searching for the true essence of what we are. So this world I see holds nothing that I want. And it starts off with quite a sort of stern statement of fact. The world you see, so this is Spirit talking to us, Holy Spirit, our true essence, the memory of what we are, the Christ mind that is awake to itself. Oops, part of the mind is dreaming and part of the mind is awake and waking. That's the part of the mind wasn't awake. We wouldn't be able to know because the part of the mind that's awake is is the Christ mind, which fully knows itself as the extension of God's love. And that's what's call, calling us back. That's the, that's the search all of us have to return. That's the angst, the anxiety that we all struggle with. Um, that's really just love calling us to know ourselves as love. So this world you see holds nothing that you need to offer you. Nothing that you can use in any way nor anything at all that serves to give you joy. Now, we may argue with that because we temporarily get joy. I could say, oh, motorcycles give me joy. But it's all temporary. Um, every time you have to fill up or buy new tires or fix a crashed part, you're unhappy. So nothing is permanent. Anything that's not permanent isn't real. And then it says again, a very stern, direct, direct to the point, statement believe this thought the thought that the world i see holds nothing that i want and you are saved from years of misery from countless disappointments and from hopes that turn to bitter ashes of despair now you've heard me say before um the way to to be in this world knowingly and happily is to realize it you're interconnected to all of it Yet you're attached to nothing, no attachment, no expectation. So you realize you're connected and non-attached, not detached, don't detach, don't push away, non-attached, dispassionate engagement. Don't listen to your thoughts, don't engage your thoughts, don't listen to opinions, don't engage opinions. Why? Don't comment, don't get involved, don't try and fix the world. Help where you can. What do you do? You do what's right in front of you. You do what's immediate. You do what's necessary, and you then pour yourself passionately into it. Always aware that you are that I am, which is awareness itself. And no one must, must, but must accept that this, is, this thought is true if he would leave the world behind. In other words, return to being awareness and soar beyond its petty scopes and little ways. Now, Bear in mind, and this is vital that you remember this, been through it myself several times, and so have you and so will you. 
there comes a time where you will start to realize with total clarity, well, then this is all pointless. If I don't exist as a separate body mind, then there's nowhere for me to go or anything for me to achieve. Success means nothing. Attainment means nothing. Conquest means nothing. Acquisitions mean nothing. Conquering means nothing. I can't own anything. Nothing belongs to me. Um, I can't gain happiness. I can't find love here. I can't find eternal happiness here. Think about it. How long? How often have you been happy? Think of all the episodes where you've been happy. Put them all together into hours and put turn those hours into days. And in the lifespan, have you had a year of happiness? <laughs> so it's like more like a few months if you're lucky. When you realize this, your ego will try and make you sad. It's not that you're sad. Don't think, oh, I'm sad, I'm disappointed, there's no meaning. You're not sad. It's the ego trying to make you believe that you're sad. So it's taken the thought, oh, there's no point. The thought immediately becomes a sensation. Sensations become feelings. Feelings become emotions. And now you think you're sad, a, a sad emotion. That's because you've given attention to the thought. No attention to thought, you can't feel anything. If you have no thoughts about anything illusionary, you can't have any emotion. And the only experience you'll feel is joy, and joy is not an emotion. Joy is an essence of extension. It's being. It's the knowing of your being. Contemplate upon this. Go Really go back into happy, happy, ooh, ooh la, la versus the joyousness of being. And you'll realize that the underlying energy of joy is peace. And peace is not an emotion. It's this neutral state where you're not attached to anything, expecting nothing, just being. And to the ego, that is so boring. It's scary. Ego hates that. It associates stillness, peace, joy with boredom and aloneness and loneliness. And that's why you know, often it was said the path of a master is a lonely one. No, it's not. It's not everything but lonely. Because when you're alone, you realize you're all one. You're not lonely at all. You may be alone, but you you'll find yourself alone even when you're surrounded by people. You're often alone in your mind, in your thoughts. So you're not alone, but you're all one. And once you've gained that understanding, then you can go and be around people, but you won't need anything from them. And it doesn't matter if they are arguing or fighting or just having a good old South African barbecue braai. You'll just sit and just, and if someone asks you to help, you jump in, or you'll see there's an occasion that requires a hand and you'll jump in. But no more association to me and look at what I can do. You'll just serve at the best you can, in the best way you can. Each, each thing, each thing you value here is but a chain that binds you to the world, to the, to the dream. And it will serve no other end but this, to trap you, to capture you. And it's not just people, places, things, and events. It's also whatever our five senses, smell, sight, hearing, taste, feeling, sensation, trap us with. We get attached to, and hence the addictions, pleasure, pain, pleasure and pain. So be careful that you don't become attached to sensations, feelings that are of anger, because that's the only time you feel anything, or sadness, because the only time you feel anything. If you're constantly feeling sad and emotional, ego is trapping you with your emotions. That's the chain that binds you to the world, your emotions. And of course, spiritual people are generally the larger part in a, in, in a large, at large, uh, the um, the more empathic bunch, generally, actually, they're compassionate, but they believe they they have empathy, which is really pure ego. Empathy is pure ego. Emotion is pure ego. They'll tell you, but but I feel. Oh, stop feeling. How how is your feelings helping you if it makes you feel bad, or sad, or angry? How how is that helping you? Step above the battlefield where it's silently still, no feeling. But then I don't feel anything, you'll say to me. No, trust me, you will. You'll feel peace. And it's not you feel peace. You'll be peaceful. And you'll be joyous. And you'll be content. And you'll, be, you'll have total clarity of being with total certainty of being. That's the true knowing. And that's the closest you get to any form of knowledge while you're in form. 
true knowledge, which is God's knowledge, is impossible for us to reach while we're in body mind. You get glimpses of it when you're in silent stillness. You get it when you're in deep sleep. But of course, you can't remember it when you wake up in the morning because the ego cannot access the silent stillness of the Christ mind. So everything you value here is a, is a chain that binds you, including emotion. For everything must serve, listen closely, for everything must serve the purpose you have given it. And you've given your body the purpose of, of capturing emotionally, emotional pleasure and, and, and excitement and, and what you call joy, but it really is just a temporal grasp of it. And it's only joyous when you stop thinking and searching and pursuing. And then it's not the activity that's joyous, but the being that's joyous because it comes to the surface. And immediately the ego appropriates the activity to it. No, it's not the activity. It's the being. Think about when you're truly happy, you weren't thinking. You weren't imagining. You weren't fantasizing. You were just in the moment. And the minute you're in the moment, you're in the now. And now is the eternal. And the eternal is God. And so when you're in the now, you're in your own essence. You're in awareness. Just in the moment. So everything must serve the purpose you have given it until you see a di different purpose here. The only purpose worthy of your mind this world contains is that you pass it by. No attachment. Without delaying, this is important, to perceive some hope where there is none. So if there, how do you perceive hope where there is none? You've got to go inward. Be you deceived no more. The world you see holds nothing that you want. Yeah, but what about my love for my children or my love for my spouse or my parents or whatever? The love you think you have for others isn't the love you have because love is not an activity. Love is not what's given between one body and another. A love is the absence of bodies. Love is the beingness of what we are. Love is what we are. God is what we are. We are the extension of God's love. We are love. So what you think is you, what your love for someone else is really love within you, calling you to be yourself knowing and to realize love loves itself. Love recognizes itself. I am love. You are love. The love I am recognizes the love you are. I know we say it to each other, good night, I love you, or good day, I love you, or whatever, I love you. But you can't actually, in truth, say I love you. In actual fact, you can't say it. It's just you recognize it. I, the love I am recognizes the love you are. Um, I think it was Francis of Assisi who said, Father, you are the love with which I love thee. Escape today the chains you place upon your mind when you perceive salvation here. Escape the chains when you perceive salvation here. Why? Because you're in the mind of God. So when you hear now in present, you'll perceive salvation, salvation joining with remembering thy true self. For what you value, you make part of you as you perceive yourself. Remember, you are perceiving. That's why we're informed. You're perceiving and projecting. All things you seek to make your value greater in your sight. Limit you further. Hide your worth from you, your true worth. And add another bar, another filter across the door that leads to true awareness of yourself. See, in this world of dreams, we want to plaster ourselves with makeup and clothes and titles and, and achievements in order to make ourselves feel better. And because why? Because we feel unworthy. So the more we achieve in worldly status, whether it be fame or fortune or whatever, the body mind then believes it's worthy and can appease its savior. The more people we can convert and preach and all of that. It's in some way or another. It's either impress others or impress upon others that others are impressed by us. Be not you that. Humility, true humility is the grandiosity, the grandeur, I 
on grandiosity, the grandeur, un, un, unlimited grandeur of God shining through you. Let nothing that relates, there's the important thing, let nothing that relates to body thoughts, because everything is about the body. Pleasure, you know, maximize pleasure, minimize pain. Maximize gain, minimize loss. Maximize safety, minimize any form of, of harm. It's always about the body from an ego perspective. So whenever you're confused about, are you doing it for the right reasons? Is it because the body needs to, or you think the body needs it? Or is it simply because you want to share yourself lovingly? Let nothing that relates to the body delay your progress to salvation, including sensation, which become feelings, which become emotion. Nor permit temptation to believe the world holds anything you want to hold you back. Nothing is here to cherry. Nothing is here. Nothing here is worth one instant of delay and pain, one moment of uncertainty and doubt. The worthless offer nothing. And everything you can see, although behind it is pure light, but what you think you see and what you want, everything you want in this world, Every course you do, every activity you pursue, everything you try and own, every relationship you try and have is to maximize your happiness. And then you try and hang on to it and control it so that you can have the certainty of outcome, which is impossible in a world of illusions where nothing is certain except that it's completely random and is designed, everything in this world is designed to hurt you, harm you, make you emotionally, an emotional wreck, a victim or the conqueror. No sooner do you build anything in this world and those that do not have the same egoic ability will try and take it from you. That's just the way the world is. It's like the planet was not made for us, even though it was made by us. And therefore, everything on this planet is designed to eat you, bite you, sting you to death or whatever. You know, it's just that way. It's going to make you fat or kill you, one or the other. <laughs> Nothing is yet to cherish. Nothing here is worth one instant of delay and pain, one moment of uncertainty and doubt, which is all this world does is give you uncertainty and doubt and, and doubt about self-worth. The worthless offer nothing, and that's what this world is. Certainty of worth <laughs> cannot be found in the worthlessness of this dream illusion. It's like candy floss. You take a bite and before you know it's gone. It's just, where does it go? Where do you go? And what did I just pay for? And so today we practice letting go of all thoughts of values we have given to this world. And values become norms, become beliefs, and beliefs become dogma. And dogma just ties us down. We leave it free of purposes that we gave its aspects, its activities, everything we think we see and its phases, and its dreams. We hold it purpose, purposeless within our mind and loosen it from all we wish it were. We wanted to be paradise, but we could never mirror heaven, which is what we try to do. We try to prove to God that we could create a heaven like, like the heaven we are. And we couldn't because we are it. And we... Although we are co-creators with God, in other words, we extend his light. We can't make our own light. And therefore, we can't make light of anything. Hence, we don't. We forgot to laugh. <laughs> Thus do we lift the chains that bar the door to freedom from the world. And we go beyond all little values, values and diminish goals. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. There's nothing here you want. And don't be afraid to let go of identity and just melt with the light so that there's no more memory of you. Because the joyous essence of being in which you are part of is all there is to want. Pause and be still a while, silent stillness, and see how far you are in silent stillness. See how far you rise above the world. You've heard my instruction. Be silently still, be grateful, abide, invite. Once inspiration comes, act. That's it. 55 years summed up in a sentence. <laughs> Pause and be still a while. See how far you rise. And take note of how far you've come. You rise above the world. 
when you release your mind, no thoughts, from chains. Chains are thoughts. And let it seek the level, the inner silence level, where it finds itself at home. Silent stillness, heart temple. Sink into the void, which is devoid of nothing because the fullness of God. It will be grateful to be free a while, just like it is when you're in deep sleep, when there's no memory of you. It knows where it belongs. But free its wings and it will fly in sureness and enjoy to join its holy purpose, which is to be the light of awareness. Let it rest in its creator. So sink down and rest. You rest in peace. You rest in God. There to be restored to sanity, because the world, what the world calls sanity is insanity. To freedom and to love. Give it 10 minutes, give it 10, give it 10 minutes, rest three times a day today. And when you when your eyes are opened afterwards, you will not value anything you see as much as when you looked at it before. So this is the trick. You don't actually have to do anything. Although we recommend practicing forgiveness and doing self-inquiry, if you were just to abide in silent stillness, no mantra needed, no prayer needed, especially no prayer needed, because true prayer is just abiding with God. That is the final and ultimate prayer. The ultimate prayer is the sharing of love. And if you were to abide in silent stillness, where the essence of you is recharged by the essence of the Christ mind, for it's the self-same essence which is shared with God. It's like a light going on inside you. And the shadowy aspects of you, the ideas, the thoughts, the perceptions, the, the values that, have you, that you've imposed upon yourself, the ideas you've imposed upon yourself, those are shadows of illusion. When you abide in silence, stillness, and gratitude in your heart temple with God, the light extends and the shadows dissolve slowly. You're not even aware of it. Because if you were aware of where if you were aware of it, you'd think you're sacrificing something. But God doesn't ask you to sacrifice and give anything up. He just takes away its value. You no longer want it. You'd be amazed. Things that you really desired. One stage are 30 motorcycles. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and all the bucket list of motorcycles, bar one, of course. And now I just look at it and think, oh, what a pop, what a pain in the Uranus. What an absolute pain in the, the donkey behind. It just just trickle charges and license fees and constant services and uh, constant. Why to have my boyhood dream to have a collection of motorcycles and date a supermodel and and drive fast cars and be successful and dress expensive suits and expensive ties and fancy pens and and restaurants and fancy fat? Why it was just miserable. I was never happy. I had all everything you can imagine. I was never happy. And then I just went back to my roots and grew up as a cowboy. We call cowboys farmers in South Africa. Boor, like a boor. And the minute I got back into my just jeans and boots and I don't ride a horse. Well, an iron one, yes. Life just became so simple and so peaceful. Because the pursuing and the chasing had gone. The being had become itself knowingly. And when, you, when your eyes are open afterwards, you will not value anything you see as much as when you looked at it before. Your whole perspective on the world will shift by just a little. Every time, every time, you let your mind escape its chains and sink into the silent stillness where you RIP, rest in peace, in God. The world is not where it belongs up there. And you belong where it would be within self as an extension of God's self, the eternal now. And where it goes to rest when you release it from the world. Where do you go to rest? In God as the extension of the light, the extension of the love, the joy, and the peace that is the, the love of God. Your God, capital G, is sure. It's your Holy Spirit. It's your spirit that calls you to remember, not a spirit outside you, no duality here, no God outside you. You are in God's spirit, and therefore your spirit is holy too, just as God's spirit is holy. And it's your holy spirit that calls you to be yourself knowingly, it calls you to love, 
yes, at first you love some people, but when you realize what love is, the unconditional acceptance that it's all you and it's all an extension of God, that's true unconditional love. Then you'll know love. Once you know yourself as that which is, then you'll know God as that which is, that created that which is, in which we appear to be dreaming. <laughs> but we're not, because we're already awake. We just haven't forgiven ourselves for the dream. Open your mind to him. Be still and rest. Be still and know I am. Be still and know I am. Is the Holy Son of God. Is the extension of God. So be still and know I am. Is God within you. And it's all of it. Protect your mind. Be vigilant. Keep your lanterns burning throughout the day as well. And when you think, uh -huh. when you, out, you think you're out, you see some value in an aspect or an image of the world, value, an emotion, a feeling, a sensation, a rightful vengeance or whatever, you know, or an image, something you want, some trinket, some car, motorcycle, girl, boy, whatever. Refuse to lay this chain upon your mind. But tell yourself with quiet certainty, this will not tempt me to delay myself. The world I see holds nothing that I want. Nothing. What you truly want is to be yourself knowingly, not conceptually, knowingly. You know that essence. It's beyond the five senses. It makes no sense to the senses. What makes sense to us as body-mind has to first affect our senses. It makes sense because I can see it. It makes sense because I can hear it. It makes sense because I can taste it. it makes sense because I can feel it. it. makes sense because I can smell it. Illusion. Illusion makes sense via the senses. The senses is the devices. And in the device, the body-mind device, which the ego uses to ascertain that it, its projection is real. Offer your senses to the Holy Spirit. And the ears will hear the voice of heaven. In everything, in echoes, in music, in silence, especially in silence. And the eyes will see the beauty shine through the objects, no matter how ugly they seem, because you'll know behind them, and they're all contained in the light. And the nose will smell the remnants of the beauty of heaven still within you. And the touch will know that you touch upon heaven in every holy instant. Senses make no sense to spirit. And that which cannot be sensed makes full sense to spirit because spirit is true sense, the sense of self, the sense, the sixth sense of self. The senses deceive because the senses lead to sensations. Sensations trigger. Yeah. Feeling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Feelings, emotions. And what's an emotion? A symbol upon a symbol upon a symbol upon a symbol. What's a thought? It's symbolic. It needs words to be expressed. Does God need symbols? Silent stillness needs symbols. That's why it's a whisper. Shh. At best. Air flowing through your lungs, through your lips. Shh. The Yahweh. <sighs> The first breath the baby takes, Yah. The exhaling, Yahweh, God, divine, supreme being, Yahweh. Our first breath, and we expire it as we fall asleep forever in this body mind. No, 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 no vowels, just breath, silence. That's the true sense. The sense which is sensibility to spirit and makes no sense to the ego body mind self that needs sensations feelings emotions need to feel something being doesn't feel you're either being or you're feeling silent stillness there's no emotion there's just peace and peace is not an emotion it's the essence of what you are peace is god peace moves through you as joy and joy and peace is unconditional love be you that
Be thyself knowingly. Be the love of God you are. Don't search. You are it. Be still and know. And nothing in this world will tempt me to delay myself again. The world I see holds nothing that I want. Be blessed. Let's stop there.